Welcome back to another anime review. Today we're doing Dias Ares episode 2. I'm Justin. I'm Logan. Together we're Couch Talk. What is it? Uh, so again, we are anime viewers only, so please, when we talk about stuff, do not confirm or deny our theories, no spoilers, anything of that nature. So, we're just gonna head, jump into this. So, yeah. the beginning of this episode... Well, we're gonna honest, try, like, we're gonna try something a bit new. We're gonna try and, like, condense our um reviews kind of like talk about the more important things instead of just going over everything yes and as always we give our scores at the end after discussing yeah the episode so again the beginning of this episode nothing really too much to be honest it's like the first eight minutes comes out as a very cliched generic kind of scenes you get you get your in the very beginning you get your standard etchy scene with the MC character skirts going up, you know, taking pictures. Um, but nothing really stands out. There's some good interaction between Fuji and Kasumi, but other than that, yeah. well, I think the, you said something jumps out. The main thing that jumps out to me was like 30 seconds in, it was him. He was talking about how he has the same dream every night, and when he wakes up, someone is dead. Because even later in this, or he was even reading the news, like, it's like, serial killer continues, like, seven dead. Yeah. Which later, we kind of find out, like, it's him doing it? Yeah, Is the vibe I'm getting? Uh, yeah, sort of, maybe, who knows. Uh, well, we'll talk about that later. And the only other thing I want to mention from the first eight minutes is when Rhea does the marry me. That is much better than how Black Clover does it. (laughs) Like, significantly better. Like, if you're going to do a little joke, like, you make it a little cute bit. That's it. <laughs> don't, but... <laughs> don't bring Black Clover over here. <laughs> People don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, True, we did We did have don't. him meet the guy from the end of the last episode. Yes, Father, Father Trifa. Which, that's where I kind of want to jump to, is the interaction between him and his, uh, Fuji and Father Trifa when he's leaving the church. Yeah, because obviously the first, like, six-ish minutes where they're walking down there interacting, he's kind of, like, it seems he's putting on a front. Because we know he's related to the bad guy somehow. So he's kind of, like, faking being this nice priest. So, let's see. Let me get to the part where... Oh, okay, yeah. The part where he asks about... uh... Yeah, exactly, like, eight minutes in, basically. we He asks him you know, uh, about his parents. And this is where we get a better glimpse of what might have happened during Fuji's childhood because it shows him as a kid where it looks like he saw them get murdered. Yes, and if you look if you look at the actual scene of him as a kid, uh, the shadow in the background definitely looks like a knife being stabbed into something. Like the left side is the oh, knife yeah, with the I handle. So maybe that's why he also has a fear of blades. Yes, and he says, like, I heard they died. He doesn't want to talk about it, really. Uh, then we do get a little interesting bit about Sham Hala, where he's like, because Father Trepa asked him, like, uh, if you could meet them again, would you? And Fuji's like, that's dumb if you're dead. Yeah, that, that's, that's like, it. That doesn't happen. We, kinda, we also learned that, I guess, Fuji and Kasumi actually... Like her parents took him in as a child, so they probably so they obviously grew up together. And I'm guessing yeah. Kasumi's dad is dead too. That's kind of the vibe I got. The way he worded uh, that. Maybe yeah. I don't know how to think about it. Always anime characters and their dead parents, man. <laughs> it's they they make you want to have sympathy towards them. It, oh yeah. It's, and this is where Father Shrifa brings in. Uh, K. Uh, and he asked her about his opinion, because apparently a lot of people are born in Shemhala, and he says a lot of crazy people are born there, and come from there. Uh, so that does give us that Shemhala seems like it's not just a city; it's more like it's like a, a utopia, separate, kind of like yeah, a world and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> it's. Just bits and 
pieces here and there where they just keep dropping hints about yeah. other things that are going on without actually having something going on. Yeah, he's... I'm just really curious as to what he meant by, like, meeting the dead. Like, can they bring them back, like, reanimated? Can they, like, warp your mind to, like, some fantasy world? I don't know. It was just interesting how he just randomly brought it up. And then we got a glimpse of another character that isn't introduced again in this episode. Yeah, he he comes across as like, kind of intimidating, just the way he looks. But they didn't. That's all they showed us is like a brief glimpse, and like that's it. They even say a name. They're just like you're one of the commander's toys, aren't you? Yeah, it's like poor thing. Then we go back to Fuji sleeping, and it look. We think it's a dream. As this girl's running away in this park. Okay, well, she... bef- like, this is when I first thought it, I thought it was a dream. And then after I watched well, the yeah, whole it scene. Does, it shows him sleeping in the bed. Yeah, which is but why then it comes across as. But then dream. it shows his eyes glow, and you see him sit up in his oh, yeah, bed. Oh, you do see him sit up. You're right. Which is because I I, miss that. I went back after I watched it because they mentioned how him and Kraft were like connected. Because I'm thinking because I was like, wait, was that a dream? Was that not a dream? Because it, it it's this weird like it's, you don't. I feel like it's a, like a combination of the yeah. Two. It's like a half dream ish world. It, it was kind of weird because he's not he's aware, but he's not fully awake. It right. seems like. Because he wakes up later on the bench. Yeah. But we get a glimpse of this girl. She's running away. This, I guess, wind slash comes through and chops off her head. And he's sitting there. Fuji's sitting there just looking at, well, a headless woman. Yeah. And that this is where the... we get the sense he's the one killing them. Yeah. That was the same woman that called the father Trifa pervert, I'm pretty sure. Oh, was I th- it? I think it was. They were wearing the same thing. I don't know if it was like on purpose or like just. I don't think it really has a meaning. I thought it was just like they they just wanted to just reuse <laughs> some character design. Huh. You are right, though. It is. <laughs> All right. So he didn't like how she was rude. I guess don't be rude towards <laughs> near Fuji. Uh, this is where we get though Bay and Rasulka yeah. introduced like so more here. Bay is the crazy white haired guy one from last episode. Rasulka's, yes, and Rasulka's the crazy pink haired girl. Not to be mistaken for the other crazy white haired guy from episode zero. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> or it could be him. Well, I guess it could be him. So this scene, they just. Kind of start at first. They kind of start like a test because yeah. it's, they're trying to test him to see if he's fit for Shamhala. Yeah, they kind of start messing with him and just like messing and around is, with him. Yes, and they also mention here is the connection to um, craft. Yeah, because like, didn't you do that because he told you to? Yeah, and exactly. I'm guessing they're referring to the beheadings because that's what I'm thinking. I think craft since they have like that eye thing i think he kind of like manipulates him to go out and kill these people because like he obviously kind of it showed that brief glimpse of him waking up and then when he like regained his consciousness you could say he was staring he was like right next to the dead woman staring at her and even the girl uh rasulka's kind of hints at it like Yes. Does he tell you to do this stuff? Like, and the only interesting, it's like half dream, half world. Is like the girl's body completely disappears when he steps on it. It just kind of evaporates and it's gone. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if he just has ability to make them pass on or whatever. Yeah. So Um, the this is where we get the fighting conflict. Yeah, Bay just starts kicking his ass. Like, pretty straightforward. Like, yes. one-sidedly. The, like, well, there anytime was a, Fuji tries to hit him, he, like, breaks yeah, all his bones. He, like, tried to punch him nothing, tried to kick him nothing. There was a weird thing that Rasulka said. 
she's like she mentioned like how torture's too delicate of a task for Bay, and then she, she's basically like if you kill him leave the head intact and she's like i can use it yeah i think i think there's something else in there that she refers to like she can use people's minds i think is what it is it, um, yeah it's that's why she needs the head intact they have a weird I don't know. They have like weird powers that they don't really elaborate on. At, yeah, least, at least she does. Uh, yeah, it just seems like Bay is kind of tough, I guess. Yeah, just strong. With like maybe some <laughs> reflective thing where you can break your bones. Yeah, and this this fight was like so. Fuji did nothing <laughs> to this guy. Like, didn't even move him an inch. Like, I feel like he doesn't know he has powers yet because, again, these have been happening while he's, like, sleepwalking. Yeah, it's it's weird. But in the middle of this fight, um, we get a little cut to, like, what seems to On be... On the beach. Yeah, it seems to be Kraft. And, and Marie. The, that Marie that we see that's related to the guillotine. Which... My guess is, since she's related to the guillotine, I think I said guillotine earlier. But you did. I, okay, I think it's a guillotine. <laughs> it's a guillotine. <laughs> she, it, something, obviously, she needs something to happen that involves beheadings. So since Kraft is like, hey, I love you, I'm going to use this Fuji kid to go behead people for my love or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's only a matter of time until they use the actual guillotine in the music. Yeah, for real. But luckily, uh, K comes. K in. steps in. K kind of comes off as a a badass. Like she don't give no shits. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, I like her so far. But out of all really. the weird German-like characters, she's probably my favorite. Because I don't know the motivation behind all these characters yet. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm hoping we learn throughout the show. Um, I'm hoping you're not going to need background knowledge. Because that's going to suck for anime viewers, which is what this is supposed to do. Yeah, we're sh our reviews are strictly from an anime perspective. Like We don't go and like research the visual novel up to this point. We just sh go strictly off what we see on the anime. But after the fight, he kind of he wakes up on the bench in the park, so that more or so clarifies he is going out and killing people. Right. Well, Rasulka kind of touches him. She's like, "It's been fun," and like, yeah, just I don't puts know, him like back to sleep. Yeah, and heals him at the same time. I don't know if like like he goes out and kills people, and then for this instance, maybe Rasulka can like take people's minds out of their body maybe that's like her thing and like put them in like this dream world i don't know it's... Uh, that is possible but obviously he is doing something because he um we saw him get out of bed i don't think rasulka did that i don't either i think she i think she interfered after he killed right that's what i'm girl. thinking too i'm pretty uh, sure he's the one i would bet like 75 percent it's him killing those people and then towards the end here, we get him going back to school. But Kay and Rasulka... It's kind of cliched here. This is a typical trope that happens a lot. Is like, or I don't know if it happens a lot. I have seen it before where, like, you know, they go to school together. Oh, yeah, like your <laughs> enemy or your rival. Yeah. Yeah, and they then start they show up at your you. school. <laughs> yes, so... This one's kind of more it, extreme since they're, like, crazy psycho killers. Crazy killers, <laughs> yes. But they do start going to school with him. Yeah, so... And that's kind of how it ends. That Yeah, that's basically the end. They're just like, hey, what's up? I like this school. Well, the translation said, like, shul. But I'm pretty sure it <laughs> meant school. <laughs> I guess. There's we, some... We have heard there's been some translation issues. A lot issues. of translation issues. We've seen it, I've seen it in the Reddit discussions. Yeah. Uh, it's been in our comment section. Which kind of sucks. Especially but, since... Uh, 
like we don't know to us it's not a translation error yeah it is just, a translation yeah that's why it kind of and that's what we have to go off of yeah so if we call someone by the wrong name it's not like we're it's because that's what we know that's the only <laughs> yeah. thing we know <laughs> <laughs> exactly um really not a whole lot to discuss here so you want to just go ahead and give your score yeah it was a pretty not too much happened i'd say we got more interactions with the bad characters but we didn't really learn anything about them it, there's kind of more ambiguous things i guess i'll give it like a six and a half it wasn't it wasn't too bad actually i'll say six it wasn't too bad um i don't know i wish i could just learn more i feel like i'm just every episode i'm like what what's going on really like i don't know what the bad people are after i don't know why they even want to show up at a school <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to mess with him like <laughs> just, i don't they're still testing him yeah i don't even know too much about i don't know there's just a lot of questions i have that I wish they'd answer, or at least give more context for. So yeah, a six. All right, six sounds good. That's kind of where I was leaning. I'm probably I'm pro- give it like a five point eight. <laughs> That's where I'm leaning. Just, uh, just so we don't. Your six point five seemed a little high when you brought it down to six. I was like, yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> uh, like I said, the first eight minutes, kind of they didn't do anything. They didn't really build characters. They just. I guess they were just trying to find a way to introduce some of the characters together. But we already knew they had a connection to the church. So them just being met at the church would have been fine, too. Um, not a lot, like you were saying, exactly how not, not enough answers, questions. There's too many questions. I'm not against having too many questions. There's just not enough background knowledge right now right which i feel like they're not they're not opening it to anime viewers they're opening it to that's what i was about to say visual novel viewers. this if you've played the visual novel these episodes could actually like have more meaning so like if i played the visual novel this could have been like an eight or whatever yeah, exactly. but yeah that's how i was with like uh persona the video game and then the anime if you played the game you would know more for the anime but i rated the anime based on the anime not yeah. excluding that game and i was like this would not be good that's that's and what that's we're how doing i here. feel like this might be yeah we're rating exclusively anime like what we see is what we get so that's what we have to like judge anyway i yeah, think i feel like there was something else i was gonna say and then it slips my mind but <laughs> yeah five five point eight. i think it's 5.8 just so we don't it's just too tie. many cliches that kind of happen throughout here just generic. so we don't tie again that's yeah. that's the five point eight. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaning towards the five point five. Earlier today, I was thinking five, but you brought up a couple points that that made it come up a little <laughs> bit. So that's usually how these discussions go. Anyway, that's kind of the point is to analyze and talk about it so we can give it a fair score. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that is going to bring it to the end for the reviewing of this Dice Air Race episode two. Um, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Of course, no spoilers. There's other anime viewers, and we're anime viewers. So nothing that will confirm, deny our theories. Just good feedback, good uh, interaction, discussions with everybody, what you thought about the episode. Maybe point out something that you thought we missed, uh, what you think your score is, anything like that. Yeah, we're open for any discussion, like positive criticism, all fair game all fair game so yeah that i think that does it entirely anything else you want to mention uh no i think i think that's it we appreciate like all the support we've got like people who like people who comment even people who just bring stuff up like hey this is translated different or like hey here's a bit of backstory all that we appreciate and it's very helpful so thanks for that i guess <laughs> <laughs> all right Good job. All right, until next time, peace out. See ya.